College basketball season is over. Now it's time for the players to weigh their options. Nobody really knows what that means. We all weigh our options every single day. But presumably, we know what the choices are the players have to make. So let's help them weigh their options. First up, stay in college or go to the NBA? The NBA, get paid millions and millions of dollars. And if you don't make millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's a lot of dollars. College, nothing. The NBA doesn't have pesky classes like college, but college, those pesky classes have frisky girls, some of whom just might do your homework. Pro for the NBA, no zone defense. Con for college, zone defense. Cowardice abounds. Verdict, get money, man. <laughs> get your money, man. <laughs> Next, stay in college, play in the D-League. College towns, places you've never heard of that have lots of girls. D-League towns, Bismarck, Erie, Fort Wayne, places you've never heard of. Sure, there's Los Angeles, but then there's Bakersfield and Frisco, Texas. Frisco, Texas. Reno, Canton, Football Hall of Fame, D-League basketball. Des Moines, Sioux Falls, Portland, Maine, Portland, Maine. Springfield, doesn't matter which Springfield. There's Austin, but you'll be losing girls to the football team at the college. Hidalgo, I'll let you look up what state that's in. D-League, your chance to get a 10-day contract. The greenest light in the world of basketball. You ever see that, like when the cats come out, you can always tell if you've never heard of a dude, if he's got the 10-day contract. <laughs> Woo! All here, <laughs> stretching this one out right here. <laughs> Here's what the guy with the 10-day contract sounds like. Woo -woo! Up top, I don't know how well he set screens, but he's a monster coming around him. Woo! Trail! Look, I'm only gonna be out here for five minutes. How much could I mess up in five minutes? I could change my world in five minutes. The 10 day contract is like the third preseason game in the NFL for a week and a half. The verdict? Guess that depends on how much you like scenic North Dakota. Think about it. It's scenic and people still don't wanna live there. Stay in college, go overseas. Get to see the world. No guarantee just what world you might be seeing. That Hidalgo in the D-League, there's Hidalgos in the European leagues too. One underrated great thing about college basketball, great in arena security. You ever play basketball in a neighborhood that was not your own? Try a whole nother country, except it's like a neighborhood basketball game. Yeah, as Georgetown. Pro for overseas, all Rosetta Stone costs the same. Pro for college, you didn't even have to pay attention in your foreign language class. They don't call a lot of fouls in those games. Well, the referees are always bad overseas. They're not gonna give you many calls. Uh, Ooh, it's hard fouls. Yeah, oh my gosh, it's crazy. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. That international hard foul has to be a completely different ball oh game. Oh my gosh, His elbow is like, boom, <laughs> you like, you know what? I'll just give it back. It's okay. <laughs> You're sorry. Right. You got the rock. The verdict? Stay at home. Unless overseas is home. Then it's different. So basically, weighing your options really isn't much of a contest in the first place. Make money, money, make money, money, money. You walking away from millions of dollars? I didn't think so. You walking away from a trip to Yugoslavia? That's what I thought. And Bismarck? That all depends on how bad you want to play for the Golden State Warriors. Oh, plenty of options. Um, there's the Maybach, there's the 7 Series. Maybe he wants one of those big old trucks that drinks up a lot of gas. You need the leg room for that. The Bose system, you, have they started putting Beats by Dre in the cars yet? I figure those are the options that he's probably looking at. Penthouse, you know, or do you want a sprawling estate? The Nike contract or the Reebok contract, right? <laughs> You may remember Irving Walker, played at Florida for about 15 years. Shorter guy. Well, he got busted by the Gainesville Police Department for stealing a $3 taco and then running and getting caught by the police and then telling them he was just playing. Sound a little bit strange to you? Us too. Maybe we need to call someone else in to crack this case. <laughs> It was late on a Friday night. Irving Walker's stomach was barking at him like a pack of hounds. So he got up, went out on the streets, 
to get himself a taco. Now who knows what would make a man want to leave his home at one o'clock in the morning just to get a delicious savory taco. Maybe he just wanted to get away from some dame. But there he was, and so begins the case of Irving Walker and the tantalizing taco. That's how I just play it. That's right. You've been there. You understand how that goes. What's the cops cup? You know this. What's the cops cup? I was just playing. However, how did that end? Uh-huh. With me and cups. And <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's, that's just kind of the thing. I was just playing. They worked. What we know is that Walker ordered the taco, which cost $3, and left without paying. We don't know why. We don't know if he left his money in his room. Just like we don't know why I'm wearing this trench coat when it's 85 degrees outside. But we know that he ran until he was surrounded by bright lights. The former Florida point guard was caught by police officers and charged with petty theft and resisting arrest without violence. I'm assuming that's the running. Is that really resisting re arrest <laughs> or avoiding arrest? That's a good question. Shaking arrest. Several questions came to mind about the case. Why were several cars needed for one man with one taco? How did Florida get so far with a point guard with such poor decision-making skills? And why doesn't this hat fit my head? I wondered how in the world he got caught running by a police officer. With the help, that's right, with the help of several marked patrol vehicles. That tells me, Mr. Nikoloff, that you did not catch Irving Walker. Somebody driving a car blocked his way, and then you got there and said, I told you to stop, thief. What was so good about that taco that you'd pay $3 for, even though it came off a truck that probably came straight from Tijuana without getting an oil change? Yeah. Does that explain not only do you get caught stealing a taco, but you also get caught running? Right, exactly. And the right, fact yeah. this is generally a... Yeah. But they can't, they can't make you take a drug test after you're done playing, can they? Yeah, I just try to get a taco, come back home, and listen to some music. That's all. That's all. That taco better have tasted sweeter than the nectar of a honeysuckle. Here's the next question. Does the young man read the news? Any newsy on the street could show him stories in the newspaper about what happens when you run away from the police. Eight cops? Eight cops. You telling me that not one out of eight does not see this as a situation to like have some fun? Come out the door, stop right there and drop the fucking taco! Now out of eight, not one. Odds are good. Odds are good. Drop the fucking taco right now! Yeah. I'm telling you, here's what it sounds like to me. He got there, he realized that he left his wallet at home or whatever. But after he done got up and left the house, you're coming back with a taco. And then the cops came, and considering the way that college students think at one o'clock in the morning on Friday nights when they want tacos, he just went with the first thing to his mind, and he ran. In the end, someone else will have to crack this case. If he can't afford a $3 taco, he can't afford Bomani and Jones, P.I. Let me tell you, this is, the, this is the big thing. This is the key that I think Urban Walker needs to know and I think that all the kids might want to keep track of. Hey man, don't let the police run after you. Two things cops are not about, running and paperwork.